Good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. It's time for Personnel Decisions Tuesday or Front Office Tuesday or whatever we're calling it these days. It's time for it. And obviously, you guys should know how this goes by now. So we're just going to be taking a look at the decisions the Seahawks made in the most recent offseason and whether or not they are paying dividends. Well, we got a win this week, so there's a dividend right there, right? We, we actually won a game. We're, we're still alive by some technical definition of alive. So hopefully things are going to look a little brighter this week, and in some areas they do. Let's, uh, let's parse through, starting with the free agent re-signings. The uh, top two guys here did not play. Carson, I mean, at this point you may as well cross him off this list. He may never play again. Uh, Alex Collins did not play either. Looks like he'll be back this week, which is good. Uh, Ethan Posick did play. Uh, he played the whole game pretty much. He allowed uh, one sack. His PFF grade went up a little bit. Personally, I didn't think Posick played good at all, really. I saw him get blown by a, a few times. I wasn't that impressed. Granted, the offensive line got better as the game went on, so it's not like he was the problem. The problem was, well, we'll, we'll get to that later, but... Uh, PFF thought Posick played an okay game. His grade is actually on the rise a little bit now. It's up to a respectable 63.3. Um, I, I just hope that the, the front office doesn't get any ideas about Posick being the long-term answer. This offseason needs to be an opportunity to get better, not just stick with something that is maybe kind of, sort of okay, which is exactly what Posick is. Puna Ford, uh, he played, what was it, 36 snaps. He had three tackles. Not a huge statistical impact, but we did play the run well. Puna Ford was definitely part of that. Uh, his PFF grade rose up above 70 again, so he's having a good season. Obviously, the um, the experiment with him at three tech needs to end after this season. I wish it would end now, but that 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 that's not him. Uh, he can't do it. It's not part of his game. He is a good player, but he's a very limited pass rusher. Uh, Carlos Dunlap. Uh, we, we, we spent some time talking about him already, but um, seven snaps, one sack, one pass deflection, a game-saving pass deflection, a sack that was worth two points. Hey, that, that's a good day's work, man. So props to Carlos. Uh, PFF grade rose a little bit to 66.7. Now, again, we didn't give him a bunch of money this year for efficiency. We gave it to him for volume, and the volume is not there. But, hey, good for Dunlap. Um, I'll, he, at least we can, at the end of the season, say he had at least one good game, I guess. Uh, Benson Mayoa did Benson Mayoa things. He played a decent number of snaps, made a few tackles. No big impact in this game. Just, he, he's a jag. He's pretty jaggy. His PFF grade's actually decent this year, 64.2. I don't like some of the stuff we're doing with him. Not totally his fault, but, uh, yeah. Benson Mayoa, the jag. All right, uh, free agency signings and trades. We've got some stuff to talk about here, starting with... Um, look, people kind of got on my case for being so mean to Gerald Everett after the last game. And look, guys, I'm... It, it's, it's cool. But you have that game, you deserve to get roasted. Okay? I, I don't hate his fan... I don't, I don't want to kill him. I don't hate him. I don't hate his family or nothing like that. I'm over all that stuff, but don't tell me he doesn't deserve to get roasted. That was probably the worst game I've ever seen any Seahawk player have, okay? In terms of impact versus negative imp like like your positive impact versus your negative impact, I challenge you to find a player who has played a worse game, Okay? He got targeted six times. Six, three of those targets ended in turnovers that were 100% his fault. He dropped in a free touchdown and turned it into um, a, a, a turnover. He dropped a guaranteed chip shot field goal that would have essentially ended the game. Like, like you cannot be worse than Gerald Everett. But it's cool. However, don't tell me he doesn't deserve to get roasted right now. Anyway, four catches, seven yards... And his PFF grade blew through the floor. 57.8. It was like 63-something last week. So with just one game, his PFF grade dropped like 7 points, I think. Really bad. 
Okay, Gabe Jackson played the whole game. He allowed another sack, so he's now getting a little leaky in his pass protection. Still overall not playing badly or anything. He's still the most reliable offensive lineman we have right now, probably. Uh, his PFF grade dropped a little bit to 62.1. I, I still think he's playing all right. He's not a super beast or anything like that, but he's a good player. I... um. The, the 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 issues with Gabe Jackson have more to do with what Gabe Jackson has forced other players to do rather than Gabe Jackson himself. It's not really his fault, but he's involved in it. But he's playing okay. Uh, Al Woods played 35 snaps, had one tackle. His PFF grade dropped a little bit, but it's, he seemed to play fine. We played good against the run against the Niners, which was meaningful. So he did good. Uh, Kerry Hyder played 20 snaps, had one tackle. PFF grade dropped more. He's entering JAG territory. I personally think Kerry Hyder is okay. I don't mind him, and he's cheap, so he may be part of the future. But, uh, yeah, he, he's not leaving a big impact on a lot of these games, admittedly. He could stand to actually make some splash plays. Bless you on Austin played a little bit, made a tackle. PFF grade rose a little bit. Sidney Jones, look at this, guys. PFF grades all the way up to 61.5. Remember where we started with this guy. So Sidney Jones played pretty good. He had, like, three tackles and a pass deflection. We're headed somewhere with Sidney Jones. He's playing better. He, his grade's going up with every game he plays. Good to see. Draft picks and UDFAs. We actually got some rookies out there this year, this this week, guys. Dwayne Eskridge played more snaps than he ever has. He had three catches for 35 yards, I think, and his first ever touchdown. He had more yards than he had his entire career leading up to this game. Not that that means a whole lot. Um... Pretty good game for Dwayne Eskridge. His PFF grade jumped like 10 points. Now, part of that is because he's barely played, so it's easy to affect that grade. Still good. Still good to see. Promising. Stone Forsyth got in there for the, I think, the last 14 offensive snaps of the game. PFF grade, 68.1. It's a small sample size. Don't tell me that this is proof that we don't need somebody to replace Dwayne Brown next offseason. Like, that's that's... We're getting way ahead of ourselves there, but he played a good game. He played a good 14 snaps. He did his job. He he, he was going up against uh, a good defensive end, too, Mr. Bosa. So, <clears throat> Forsyth, good first game. Now, Jake Curhan played most of the game, allowed two sacks. PFF grade is the lowest I've ever seen any PFF grade before, 27 that's like, remember in Charlie Brown when the girl got a Z grade and she was like, you can't give me a Z. A Z isn't a grade. A Z is sarcasm. Like, this is like a Z, man. I've never seen something this low before. This is like... Okay, Jay Curhan was playing out of position. He wasn't somebody who was expecting to play in that game. And his presence did allow the offensive line to settle down. I, I do think he's probably better than Kyle Fuller. But uh, by that same token, he's got a lot of stuff to work on. Um, what I'm trying to get at here is hurry back Damian Lewis. As much as Damian Lewis is not uh, Superman, as much as Damian Lewis is not um, having his best season, we need him out there, okay? Because Jake Curhan, it was good to see him get some experience, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we have... Pro whoa, whoa, whoa. Blah. You get it. Okay, now we're going to do our big free agent departures. Shaq Griffin did not play because of injury. Jerron Reed played. He had like five tackles. His PFF grade actually jumped quite a few points up to 47.2. So he had a pretty good game, it seems like. Uh, the Kansas City defense is coming alive, by the way. Um, not that he's the reason, but he's part of it. KJ Wright played, I think, 35 snaps and had three tackles. Not a big impact, but he was out there grinding. PFF grade dropped a little bit to 63.4. He's having an, a good year. Uh, Carlos Hyde, 10 touches. Uh, what was it? Uh, let me check here. Yeah, uh, he had 10 touches and 23 yards. Finally got in the end zone. He got a touchdown, so that's cool. PFF grade is still at 54.6, so eh. Trey Flowers played like six snaps and got a few tackles for the Bengals. PFF grade uh, went down a little bit, and that's it for your free agency departures, and that's it for this week. So, there's some stuff to like here, some stuff to not like here, as is usually going to be the case. Obviously, in terms of surprise and 
impact. The the big story coming out of this game, I don't know if it's the big story, but a significant story is Stone Forsyth holding his own in a situation where a lot of players wouldn't have held their own. Um, so that's something that could be hugely impactful going forward. It's nice to see Dwayne Eskridge get some meaningful burn and do some good stuff. Now, we are starting to see production slip from some guys like Kerry Hyder. Uh, uh, I'm not even going to say Gerald Everett, you, you, whatever. But we also did see the resurgence or, you know, for at least a couple plays of, of Carlos Dunlap. So hopefully that can hold because, look, Dunlap's going to cost almost the same amount of money if he's here or not here next year. So if he can prove that he belongs to at least, if he's worth at least the nine hundred grand that we would owe him extra if we keep him, then that's that's not a bad thing, I don't think. All right, see you guys later today. Peace out. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below.